and there is no God worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And we testify to that without compulsion. And we testify without compulsion that Muhammad is indeed Allah's last slave, servant, and messenger. That he is indeed Qutum Nabi, Qutum Rasul. He is the seal of the prophets. So Allah and the That he is Imam al Mursaleen. He is the Imam of all the messengers. That he is the best of creation. That he is a Rahmat to Ayyameen. Allah says in the Quran, He sent him as a Rahmat to Ayyameen, a mercy to all of existence. He testified to that. And today, we're going to talk about a surah from the Quran that we say in every salah. Surah to Al-Fatiha, the opening. Surah to Al-Fatiha Al has a variety of meanings, a variety of names that we call them. Some of them are such. Um al-Kitab, the mother of the book. It's the foundation or the core of the book. Core of the Quran. What book? The Quran. It's the core of Allah's book, the Quran. It is also called Sidra Matani, the oft repeated verses. Also, it's called Surah Al Hamd, the chapter of praise. Al Hamd, the praise. It's also called Al Salah. It's also called the Ashifa, the healing. The Al-Fatiha means the opening. In this Quranic context, it means the opening to the Quran. The opening chapter of the Quran, or the opening verses of the Quran. The Al-Fatiha is very important because they say that the Al-Fatiha is, the rest of the Quran is an answer to the Al-Fatiha, to what the Al-Fatiha is saying. So how does the Al-Fatiha begin? It begins with two words, bih and ism, bism, right? The word bih has many meanings. One of its meanings, it means with. We say, a'udhu bilah, bilah. We seek refuge with Allah. So we with, right? And the ism means name. In this case, the, the what comes after it indicates the supreme name, bismillah. So it begins with the Bismillah. Now, generally when someone initially uh, introduces themselves to you, they tell you or they give you the most important details about themselves. They describe themselves and they give you what they deem as important. So if I meet you and I, I feel like I'm an upright person, I, see, I use the word upright. Uh, whatever the word is described to me, I use that word, especially when we're in a job in New York. We meet a person for the first time, we want to give them the best description of ourselves. So Allah begins by telling us, Bismillah, it begins with the name of Allah, or with Allah's name, Bismillah, right? And then he follows it, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So Allah introduces himself with his supreme name first, and then he follows up, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. He comes with his mercy. The Rahman means the one, a Rahman means the one who, whose mercy is so merciful that nothing can escape his mercy. Nothing can escape the mercy of Allah. So think about this for a minute. He, he begins his description of himself or his introducing himself to us with his supreme name and with his mercy. Not his might, not his power, not his wrath. He begins with a Rahman the Rahim. And he uses the same, the same root word for both those, those attributes, right? So he comes with mercy from the very beginning. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, show mercy to creation and Allah will show us mercy. Show mercy to creation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show us mercy. So this mercy that Allah extends to us this mercy is so far-reaching that nothing escapes his mercy. 
not even the mushrikeen, not even the kafirun, nothing, not even tabu, nothing escapes the mercy of Allah. Because everything has oxygen. Everything has breath. Everything shares the light of the sun. All these things that Allah has given, everybody shares in it. All existence is shared. Share. If he just removed it, just a, a small fraction, it can destroy everyone. You see? So through his mercy, everybody receives his rahmah. Bismillah the Rahman the Rahim. And then he goes in the very next verse, he says, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah. He says, Alhamdulillah. The first word in the next ayat is Alhamdulillah. And he used the definite article, Al. Just like he did Rahman. The definite article, Al, means he is deep. The, all the praise is he. All of it belongs to him. All of the Hamd belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He owns the praise. He owns the praise. Alhamdulillah. He owns the praise. And this word Hamd has a variety of meanings. The first is Ma'ad, meaning praise. Ma'ad, meaning praise, like praise. Praise, we praise him. The second is Shukra. That within the Hamd, there's Shukra. We're thankful. We, we don't just praise him, but we're thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see? It's, it's, it's imperative that we that we understand the Quran, that we understand the meaning of the words and not just recite. And that, that well, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa spoke about a time that would come when people will recite the Quran beautifully, but they would not understand his words. He talked about a people, some say from Naj, or wherever they're from, that will recite the Quran beautifully, they will recite the Quran so well, they will look like Muslims, and they said the Quran wouldn't pass their throat. So we have to reflect and ponder on the meaning of the Quran. Umar ibn al-Qadr, he wouldn't even move to the next verse of Quran learning until he first, what, understood it and then implemented it, then lived it. This is how important the meaning of the Quran. You can't live it if you don't understand it. So it's important that we understand this very vital surah that we recite in every salat. You can't make salat without the avatiya. You have to have the avatiya. So it's better that we understand. So Allah says, Alhamdulillah. And this ham means praise or means thankful. To be thankful. We ain't just praising Allah, but we thankful to Allah. We thankful for the breath that He gives us, for the sight, for the, for the hearing, for all of the, of the, the barakah, the tawab that Allah gives us, and all the gifts that Allah, all the nikmah that Allah gives us. We're thankful to Allah for this. You see? So we say, Alhamdulillah. Right? Now, before I go further, the scholars of Islam have divided the Fatiha into two parts before we even go further. The first part, Allah introduces Himself and we give Allah the praise. The first part is for Allah, right? For Allah. And then the second part, we make a dua. It's for ourselves. We'll go, we'll go further than that. So Allah is the source of all the praise. Therefore, He is the owner of the praise and the thanks. Alhamdulillah. The very next word, the next word in the ayat is Rabb. Rabbil Alameen, Rabb, Lord, Master, Sustainer, Controller for all. Rabbil Alameen, Alameen is all of existence, all of the worlds. Allah has worlds that we don't even know about. If there are aliens, Allah is their Lord. He sustains them. If there's people on Mars, Allah sustains them. Wherever their existence is, Allah is its sustainer. He's its Rabb. He's Lord of all of existence, all of creation. He's Lord of it all. And this introduces us to Allah's concept, Arububiyya, His Lordship, right? And we see this when people when we study Tawheed. They say Tawheed Arububiyya, right? The, the oneness of His Lordship. So Allah introduces us to His Rububiyya right in Surah Talabatiya. He says, Arabdul Alameen, He is the, the praise is His, the thanks is His, and He is Lord of all of existence. Right? All of existence. I don't care what the scientists come up with, what the astrologers come up with. Allah is Lord of it. Whatever it is they come up with. He's Lord of everything, of all of existence. And it means that Allah, this Rabb, this word means a planner, a one who plans, or um, for which we trust in our Rabb, which is the byproduct of loving our Rabb. Huh? Because we praise him and thank him, and now we understand he's telling us that he is Rabbul Alameen, I'm responsible for everything you have. 
I'm the source of all of your existence. I'm the source of everything that you have. I'm the source of your existence. And another verse of Allah says, Antum al huwa al al He said, you are the poor, and Allah is the infinitely rich, worthy of praise. So Allah said, the, the, the money you make, um, the food you eat, everything, the water you drink, everything, Allah is the, the Lord of our existence, and he's the one who sustains it for you. He sustains it for you. He put, a, he put a process in creation that sustains us. All this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so all of existence, there are various worlds that Allah created. You know, there are different realms of existence. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Lord of all of existence. He says, he says Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Rahman, Rahim. He goes right back to the mercy again. Rahman Rahim, right back to it. He still hasn't introduced us to any of his majestic attributes yet. Everything he's, is coming at us is soft and merciful. It corresponds with the time. What did Allah say about tell us to do? What did he tell Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He told him what? Come with the good news first. He didn't say the warning. He said come with the good news first. Tell the people the good news. Rabbil Alameen, tell the people Alhamdulillah, tell the people about Rahman Rahim, tell them about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tell them about the Rahman to Alameen, the mercy he sent in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so in this mercy, right we, we come with this mercy so we come humble, we come bringing people the good news the good news of submission to Allah the good news of Islam the good news that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a way out of ignorance. The good news that Allah has given you a light that will guide you. How do we know we have seen a light? Because he says it in the Quran. What did he say? He called the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said he was a, a lamp giving light. Right? A lamp giving light. That he was a light. What does a light do? If the lights go out right now and somebody lit, lit their phone up, what would that do? That would give us the path to get out of here, right? To walk out of here. So he's giving you a light out of ignorance, out of jahil, out of ignorance, and giving you a path, a light that will lead you on a path that will take you to Jannah. That will take you to Jannah. So he says, he says, Alhamdulillah, Rahim, Maliki Yawmidin. He says, Now, now he finally comes with majesty. After all this mercy, now he's telling you, hey, look, hey, look, I'm the king, I'm the owner, I'm the master of the day of repayment. Yawmidin. The word deen means life transaction, right? The life transaction. The same word we use, deen al-Islam. Same word, deen, right? Life transaction, right? The day of repayment for what? What are we being repaid for? That means we made a deal. When we pay it back, that means there's a contract somewhere. There was an agreement somewhere, a covenant, right? Right? What what, what the Allah tells us to Allah? He tells us that, he says that angels came to us when we were in the loins of our father Adam. And he said, he asked us a question. He said, Allah to be Rabbi Kun, am I not your Lord? And he said, all of us said yes. Now what did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu tell us? He said, every child is born, he's born in Fitra. He's born a Muslim. He's born understanding that covenant, right? He said, and his parents and environment changes him, makes him forget. He becomes Ghafir. He forgets the covenant he had. That's why some people say when you catch Shahada, you revert. You go back to that covenant. You go back to that natural state that you were in, right? So Allah tells you, Maliki Yawmidin, he's going to, this is the day when you're going to fulfill that covenant. You're going to ask for the covenant you made with him, right? And constantly in the Quran, Allah is telling us his promise. Wallahi, well, Allah's promise is true. It's true. I don't care what the circumstances call for in this earthly dunya, Allah's promise is true in this life and the after. It's true. Wallahi, well, it it's true. It's true. Allah, Sadaq Allah, Allah speaks the truth. So he says, Maliki Yawmidin. Now, this is the pinnacle of the, of the Fatiha. The verse the next is the pinnacle of the Fatiha. Right? This is where we admit our incapacity. We admit to being the slave of Allah. We admit that we need Allah. You see? You alone do we worship. You alone do we serve. The word Ibadah is. I, it's the same as Na'budu, from the word Ibadah, from the word Abdi. The same word. 
the ubudiyah, service, all this from the same root, right? So you do we serve, you do we worship, you alone, huh? Allah alone do we worship, nothing else. No one else, nothing else, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you, we need your help. We need to. We can't do it without you. We admit this in the Fatiha. You see? When the Qari gets the Yakana Abudu wa Yakana Stain, sometimes they say the Sahaba used to break down crying because they understood the meaning of it. You see? Because we we admitting our incapacity before Allah, that we cannot do it without Allah. We think that we got we think that we uh, we get all these successes because of our intelligence, because of all this stuff about ourselves. We're so full of ourselves. You see? But it's only because of what Allah, the gifts that Allah has given us. So we admit to that. We admit to needing him, to worshiping him alone and needing him. Now this is the part that's, that we make the dua. See, the next part is a dua. See, now we want to do what it says, Ihdina sirato mustaqim. Guide us. Ihdina. From the word you got. Right? Guide us. Ihdina sirato mustaqim. Now, before we got to that, we just admitted our incapacity. We just admitted that we, we can't do it without Allah. That we need your help. What do we need his help doing? Why? Why do we need his help? We need you to guide us through the straight path. Ihdina sirato mustaqim. Guide us through the straight path. The path is straight. We want to be on the straight path. The path to where? What is, the word path, sirato, means what? Mustaqim, where we're going at? A path means you're going somewhere, right? On the road means you're going somewhere. Where are we going? In the Allahi Alayhi wa From Allah we come, to Allah we go back. We're going back to Allah to be held accountable. Maliki Yamadi, remember? We're going back to be held accountable. So we want to be on the path to straight what? Straight to Allah, straight to Jannah. That's the path we want to be on. If Dina Surat al-Mustaqeen, Surat al-Madina namta alayhim, ghayru al-Lakdubi alayhim wa al-Qal ina alayhim. So now, we want to be on the path that's straight, right? The path that people are blessed us on. We want to be on the path of the Nabiul, of the, of the, of the, of the, the, uh, the Prophet, the Mursaleen. We want to be on the path of the Awliya, the path of the Sadiqun. Uh, Sadi all, all the righteous people, the Salihun, we want to be on that path. We want to follow the path that they follow. But I want to warn you about that path. That path is full of fitness, full of tests, full of trials. Allah says in Surah Al-Inkabal, do you think that you'll be left on saying that you believe without being tested? Huh? It's the soul of Allah. Ibn Abbas, Rabbi Allah, who said, he said, if you own the deen and you experience no fitness, you experience no trials, then he says, I'm afraid you've lost your deen. He said, I'm afraid that we've lost the deen if we don't have the trials and tribulations. You see? So the straight path is full of obstacles and difficulties. You see? But we want to be on that path. We don't want to be on the path that what? Of those people what? Those people who incur Allah's anger, his wrath, and those people who <coughs> go astray. The people who incur Allah's anger, some of them, even to me already, uh, he said the people that incur the, he, he, he used the people in the book. And he said that the uh, people who incur the anger are the Yahud, the Jews, because they have knowledge of Allah. And they go astray knowingly. So he says in Islam, the one who knows, the scholar, goes astray like the Jew. You see? And Allah's anger is on those who go astray knowingly. Right? He says the people who go astray, you know, are people who are ignorant. So the Christians are ignorant. They say about the law, but they have no right, they have no knowledge of it. You see? They say about the law, but they have no right, and they have no knowledge of it. You see? And so they, they say that ignorant Muslims, the ignorant worship that goes astray, goes astray like the Christian. This is what some of the uh, some of the scholars say. Let me take me to he spoke on this matter. So we see that the last part of the Fatiha is a dua. It's a dua. We ask the law for something. We praise them, and we should follow this same format. When we make dua, what do we do first? We call Allah by his name, and then we praise him, and then we admit our incapacity, and then we ask him. Right? Then we ask him. Then we say, I mean, let it be, right? Let it be. That is the first person to cook while I show you what.
Now, a loss of fun. We just ended it with Dua, right? We said, I mean, let it be. So guess what Allah does? La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Guess what Allah does? He says, Alif la mean, valik ya kitab ulare, bafi hi hudun lil muntaqi. He answers the dua. What, what, what's the first word he says? He says, Alif la mean, this is the book. In it, guidance. Remember the guidance? If you as well, who's the king you asked for? This is the book. You want guidance? This is the book. The Quran. This is the book. In it is guidance without doubt. Can't okay? no doubt in it. Can't be no doubt. And no doubt in this, this is the, the, the hot, this is it. This is the A to Z of existence. So then Surah Tabakra answers your dua, right? And they said the rest of the Quran explains Surah Tabakra. You see? So Allah answered the dua by giving us the rest of the Quran. And then he did better than that. Aisha radiallahu anha was asked about the message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what did she say? He is the Quran on two feet. He is the Quran walking. You want to know how to live the Quran? Follow the example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the Quran walker. He is an embodiment and a manifestation of the Quran. And there's no better manifestation of the Quran than Muhammad, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this whole deen is predicated on the shahada, right? And the shahada is a true testimony. Give me Jamea saying, let Tawheed be doing your Rasul. He said, there can be no Tawheed without the message of Allah. You can't understand it. You can't follow this path without following who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have to follow him. He's the best example. Allah tells you that over and over in the Quran. He is the best example. You want to know about Musa alayhi salam and all the prophets came before him? You want to know what they taught? Follow Muhammad. He'll teach you what they taught. Because he's the, he's the, the, the embodiment of all their teachings. He is the prophet sent to all the world. Not to his people, to all the world, to all of existence. Jin and men. You see? You see? So this, this, this the Fatiha gives you a whole, a whole um, um, description of what, the straight path, the end of this land. You know, the Fatiha is in all fours. When we say this, 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 this powerful prayer in all of our salah, it's powerful. I mean, you, you, you praise him a lot, the highest way you can praise him. And then you're admitting your incapacity, and then you're asking Allah for guidance. What else is there to ask him for besides guidance? If, you, if he gave you guidance, you got it all. I don't care if you're a million dollars, you ain't got two pennies. You got it all if you got his guidance. If you got his guidance. Alhamdulillah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us from the path of strength. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us of all of our sins, all of our reactions, and all of our trespasses. We ask Allah to forgive us of all of our enemies. We ask Allah to protect and save us from our own selves and from the shaitan that rejected one and is closer to evil, men, women, and jinn, who took the harm us and just to guide us. And we thank Allah for the guilt of Islam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Rahim Maliki Yawm Deen. Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasfa'een. Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeen. Sirat Al-Adhina Alamta Alayhim. Ghayru Al-Makhdubi Alayhim Walil-Tawameen. Amin Subhana Rabbika Rabbi Iziyyati Ama Yasifun. Wa Salaam Ala Mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Come with us all, inshaAllah. Allahu Akbar.